Hi, this is Dale Rhoda. The purpose of this brief video is to show you how to calculate coverage confidence intervals using EpiInfo. Now, just a, a word of background here. We, we've said in earlier videos that uh, we calculate an indicator variable that's coded, ultimately coded zero or one or missing. And we've talked about the fact that the point estimate for vaccination coverage is a, just a simple weighted average of that indicator variable. And you don't need fancy software that, that knows anything about complex sample design to calculate the point estimate. You simply have to calculate the weights, merge them under the data set, and then, and then sum them up in the ways that we showed in the earlier video. But when we're going to estimate the confidence interval, which depends on the standard error, now we need to use some software that takes into account the sample design, the clustering, and the stratification in the sample design. So now we need to use some more advanced uh, software, and the, the equations are more complicated. We're not even going to show the equations here. Uh, we're just going to assume that you can have access to some software that will do it. This video shows EpiInfo. The next video will show Stata, and then perhaps some of you will share some information with us about how to do this in SPSS in R. In, in each case, we usually need to refer to at least four variables for the estimate. We need to of course, know the name of the variable that we want to calculate coverage for, the indicator variable. Then we need to know the name of the variable for the weight, the respondent weight, which you know, in our case will be a post-stratified weight. We need to know the name of the variable for the stratum ID and for the cluster ID, where the clusters, of course, are nested within the strata. Instead of a live demo, I'm going to show you some screenshots here of, of what I've done in EpiInfo on my computer. So when I call up EpiInfo version 7, I get an um, interface that looks like this, and I click down in the lower left corner on the classic button. When I click there, it brings up a tall menu of a, a lot of commands. And I use the read command to read the data set. Presumably you EpiInfo users know how to do that. I usually read it in from an Excel file. But then we're going to focus here in the advanced statistics section, just uh, just below the middle. And so now I've just zoomed in on the advanced statistics section here because I want to show you that there are two uh, alternative commands. You could use the complex sample frequency command, or you could use the complex sample mean command to calculate coverage. When your indicator variable is a zero, one variable, either of these will give the same answer. If you click on complex sample means, then you're going to get a dialog box that looks like this. This one is empty. Uh, and then you, you would click each of these little uh, down arrows and select the appropriate variable. So in this upper left box, you're going to tell it what variable you want to summarize. Let's look at the box after I filled it in. So here we're, we're going to calculate crude coverage of BCG using evidence just from cards. So this is my indicator variable. I've filled in the name of the weight variable, the cluster ID variable. In this case, the stratum ID is a level three ID. And then I want to make a cross tab. I want to make a table that shows coverage of crude BCG by card for each state in the data set. This is in your creator project data set. So I put level three name here because I happen to know that holds the name of the states. And when I do that, after a few seconds of waiting, this is the table that EpiInfo produces the mean of the 0, 1 variable. This is the estimated coverage. And this would need to be multiplied by 100 to put it on the percent scale. So in the state of Bauchi, the estimated coverage is 18.3%. So we would multiply this column by 100. Here, this is our n. This is the sample size, the number of respondents that were included in the calculation. We see here over on the far right that for each of these states, the minimum value of the indicator variable was a zero and the maximum was a one. Now this table doesn't tell us anything about the values of the weights, but, but it, the calculation did use the weights. And then here are the confidence limits. It, it's a little unfortunate that this table doesn't tell us how they were calculated. I had to do a little work to figure out that they are walled confidence limits. They are indeed walled and they are 95% two-sided limits. And again, we would multiply them by 100. So for Bauchi, the 95% confidence interval would extend from 11.1% up to 25.6%. As I mentioned in the last video, it's okay 
if EpiInfo is the only tool that you have, then that's the tool you should use. We definitely want to take the complex sample design into account. And uh, you should mention in the methods session, section of the report, which tool you used, which version you used, and what sort of confidence intervals you calculated. Now, if you do a coverage survey and you use EpiInfo, and you find some coverage outcomes that are very low, say below 20%, or very high, above 80%, then I recommend that you, you team up with a colleague who has access and skills to use uh, Stata or SPSS or R and in order to calculate the Wilson intervals because they will be more appropriate than the Wald intervals. But it's also fine if, if all you can do is to do the Wald and you report what you did, then that will be okay as well. Now, I, I have an opportunity for you. I'm not an EpiInfo expert. So if you say, Oh, no, that's not true, Dale. You can get the Wilson confidence interval. If you know how to get a Wilson confidence interval, I'd appreciate it if you'd let me know. And the other thing I wasn't able to do in EpiInfo is I wanted to calculate the one-sided 95% confidence limit. And I usually do that by calculating a two-sided 90% confidence bound or 90% confidence interval. But I couldn't see a way in EpiInfo to change the value of alpha from 5%. That's what gives us the 95% interval. And I wanted to change alpha to 10% so I could calculate a 90% interval. And I'm, I'm just not skilled enough in EpiInfo to do that. So if you know how to do that, either of those things, please let me know and we'll, we'll share that with all the other students. As is the case with the other videos, our preferred approach for comments is that you post them in the Survey Scholar community update where you found the link to this video. And if you came to this video from by some other path, and you have questions, then you could use uh, the email addresses below here. Thanks so much for your time.